For many Papua New Guineans, Sam Ekere Morauta will be remembered as the straight-shooting politician and the reformist prime minister whose work came to be appreciated more than a decade later. Up until the 1990s, Mekere Morauta's public life was rather low-key. He thrived behind the scenes, helping to develop, shape and implement important government policies. He was the first graduate in economics from the University of Papua New Guinea and with it came important responsibilities, both for his people and the country. When I look back, I recall very clearly someone talking to me in 1979-80, Sir John Crawford, a famous Australian. He told me, or made a statement, saying that Papua New Guinea's stand standard of policy making and government public service was so high, the quality was so good, so early in, the, in this nation's life. His challenge to me was, could those standards be sustained? Because possibly you couldn't better them. So the task of sustaining a nation with those qualities was going to be our challenge. When I look back now, I find he was right. In 1971, he began a career in the public service as a research officer with the Department of Labor. A year later, he took up a job as economist in the Office of Economic Advisor. When Papua New Guinea became self-governing in 1973, the government of Chief Minister Michael Sumare sought out its best and brightest to help run the young democracy. At 27, Mekere Morauta was thrust into a position of power and responsibility when he was appointed Secretary for Finance, a post he held for nine years. He was always an important influencer in the banking and financial sector of Papua New Guinea. In 1983, he was appointed Managing Director of the Papua New Guinea Banking Corporation, an important PNG institution. He held the position for another nine years until his upward transition to a new job as the governor of the Bank of Papua New Guinea. It was in this short stint as central bank governor that he shot to prominence as an outspoken enemy of corruption that was infecting PNG government institutions. Sir Julius Chan was Prime Minister then, and in a foreign documentary on corruption in Papua New Guinea, Mekere Morauta spoke out and was removed one year into the job. I think it would be fair for me to describe corruption as both systemic and systematic. Systemic because it has invaded the whole processes of policy making and decision making. It has drowned the whole system, so it's systemic. It's systematic because it's organized. The period from 1994 to 1997 were politically turbulent. The international attention on government institutions and the corruption highlighted by key figures in Papua New Guinea, including Seme Kere, caused many Papua New Guineans to demand a change in leadership and management. The seeds had already been planted. In 1997, when the government of Sir Julius Chan opted to bring in South African mercenaries to end the Bougainville crisis, PNGDF Commander Brigadier General Jerry Singro called for the Prime Minister to step down and riots broke out. It was months before the elections and when Sir Julius was voted out of office, a new group of political leaders, including Sir Mekere Morauta, were voted in. For the next three years, the country faced deep economic trouble. The decade-long closure of the Bougainville mine, a severe drought and high unemployment and government institutions in desperate need for reform. This was the scenario in 1999 when Semekere took over from Bill Skate as Prime Minister. In the next three years, Semekere had the most impact on Papua New Guinea's political and economic future. You know, the country had been had been completely wrecked by just dreadful governance um, 
and um, you look at the economic and social indicators and it's quite clear that Papua New Guinea was on its knees. Um, he came straight in and instituted a whole series of reforms that um, changed the face of Papua New Guinea and sustained the economy and society right through um, to the end of uh, uh, the end of, la of last year. His, his reforms had very deep and very lasting um, effects. Part of the reason for that is that he was internationally renowned and when the, the crunch came in 1999 he was able to call on um, friendly foreign governments, friendly international institutions um, and expertise from all over the world to support uh, Papua New Guinea in that, that time of crisis. Um, he brought concessional finances to Papua New Guinea through loans from Australia, Japan, China, New Zealand, um, concessional lending from the World Bank and IMF, uh, the Asian Development Bank, and that is because of his international stature. In 2000, the McCarrick government introduced sweeping reforms in the finance and banking sector. He introduced legislative reforms that strengthened the superannuation funds and banks, effectively eliminating much of the political interference that these institutions had long been burdened with. Through the reforms, Nest Fund and other super funds, which were on the brink of collapse, were revived and strengthened. We will remember Simekere for the strong political leadership that he displayed in 2000 for driving uh, superannuation reforms in Papua New Guinea. Uh, if he hadn't uh, intervened uh, at the time, I think the funds who were laden with uh, problems, with deficiencies, uh, lack of governance, uh, strong political interference uh, would have been in a different state today. So to Simekere, uh, the superannuation in industry owes him a lot. As a proponent of um, implementing the reforms that Semakere instituted in 2000, the super energy industry uh, is very strong uh, today. Uh, members, contributors to the funds, NAS Fund, uh, Number One Super, Commonwealth Trustee, uh, their prede predecessor organizations, uh, the National Provident Fund, Public Officers Superannuation Fund, and the Defense Force Retirement Fund, has strongly benefited from the governance. Uh, reforms that were part and parcel of the superannuation legislation. So we owe Sir McCary a lot for those reforms. In the political sphere, constitutional changes were made to strengthen political parties and other institutions of state. As Papua New Guineans come to grips with the void left by Sir McCary's passing, the impact of his decisions at the turn of this century will continue to be felt decades into the future. Uh, from a, a personal point of view, it was a, a wonderful experience uh, to work for him. Um, I know there are a lot of other Papua New Guineans who feel the same way. And, um, you know, I hope he's, um, he's recommended, he's remembered um, in the way that he deserves.